Back with chapter two, part eight. Or we're starting, we're not back to it. We're, just, we're starting part eight. Christine killed Mr. Bouquet? That's outrageous. He's such a gentle soul. But think about it. Madame Jerry wouldn't have committed a crime because of her daughter. And the noose was found in Christine's dressing room. Oh dear me, is that the murder weapon? It is, remember how Mr. Bouquet was killed with one rope around his neck? Miss Dye may not have committed the murder herself, but she could be hiding a, a bedding the culprit. That's true. Such a good-hearted girl like her can easily be manipulated. She might not have been manipulated by voluntarily helping the murder. Oh, I really hope Christine's not the culprit. Sir, I've told them you as you've instructed. Good job, Remy. Now go on, finish your task. Good job. Did they believe you? Half of them did, while the other half remained skeptical. I see. It's just as I thought. Since Miss Daya has no connections here whatsoever, no one will vouch for her innocence. People fall for these things surprisingly easy, don't they? Shh, they'll hear you. Well, whether she's the culprit or not isn't important. Mr. Remy, are you certain that you put the rope in the dressing room? Of course. And you told them the right story for to some of the more lucrative come on, ah, lucrative customers. Of course, sir. I already told them about it a while ago. Mr. Commissionary, I believe you can proceed with your investigation as in then. This should definitely resolve the irritating case. The press will appreciate this too. A young, beautiful starlet will draw much more attention than any old hag. Miss Dye has only two people on her side, does she? Those haughty D. Chagney brothers? So what? We have La Epo and... I didn't fuck that up, but oh well. And admirers of Miss Alonzo on our side. Yes, it's not important that the story adds up. It's merely a matter of who are more powerful. Ha ha ha. Anyway, Mr. Polygny sent a letter. What? Mr. Polygny did? Why? This better not be some gibberish about the Phantom again. Okay. What? Okay, I tried to talk to Remy. What? Oh my god. Is that it? Yes. What does it say? We deeply appreciate your hospitality. However, I'd like to remind you that you we have no right to take a box fight on the Grand Tier. As we informed you before, that seat already belongs to someone else. You haven't forgotten about the financial clause in Article 63 of the contract, have you? Have we forgotten, they say? This is most unacceptable. That damn fan, that damn Pogni. I hope she delivered my roses safely, as I can't ha hand them to her in person. That was the best I could do to let her know how I feel. By the way, the mood's a bit odd in the Opera House today. I hope there's nothing wrong with Christine. 
Christine Dyer, who would have thought? Has she no shame? I'd leave the opera house if I were her. Wait, what on earth are they talking about? Pardon me, are you talking about Christine Dye? Oh, have you not heard the news? Why are you looking for that wrench? You can find that rich singer in the police station, so why don't you go there and leave us alone? What? Rich is singer? What's this about, police station? Didn't you know? Why don't you read this? Oh no, not one of these things. <laughs> ah! That was too early. <laughs> Oh, that one, I almost messed up. You mean people really believe this? I heard they discovered the noose in Dai's dressing room. That does not prove anything, let alone a murder. Rope can be found in any room, not to mention she doesn't have a clear motive. Are you defending the murderer right now? Murderer? The murderer accused by La Epo? <laughs> when he has the paper, it for printing a proper article. Thanks to people like you, they never go out of business. I was only here to check on Miss Alonzo, but I had to run into an annoying fellow. Anyway, this came straight from the Opera House. It says that it's a reliable source, good sir. Why is Christine being accused of murder? No doubt it's the managers who are behind this. Damn, surely the Angel of Music is already aware of this. He calls himself the Angel of Music, yet does nothing? Just as a true crook would do, he uses the name of an angel. That fiend has nothing to do for Christine. He never said to let a recommendation or dare to stop the managers as I did. Christine seemed to be very reliant upon that angel. Where do I even begin? Hmm. Did he think I'd submit to some stupid letter? Just you wait and see. I ought to pickle that fiend in vinegar. Wait, is that Madame Jury? Hang on, Madame. Oh my, what is it? What brings you here? Is it because of the bouquet case? That's not it. I, Madame Jury, am innocent. I received a letter which I thought I should pass on to the managers. Then let me come with you. I also have business in the manager's office. Come in. Um, how are you gentlemen? How are we? Why don't you read this first, Miss de Count de Chagny? See if you can tell how we're doing after you read this. How could we be anything other than outraged when we read something so ridiculous?
Please calm down, Mr. Marshman. This looks like the envelope from before. Oh no. <laughs> Ah, the fan of the opera. And this appears to be the ultimatum? I'm all for it, but why would a fan of Demand Christine play the lead role? This is most annoying, most aggravating. Does he think he owns this opera house or something? We are the restore we are to restore Mount Jury's job? And he wants an exclusive seat back? Must we let Christine si die sing the lead role instead of Miss Alonzo? The lead role belongs to me! That damn Phantom, that damn die, that damn man of jury! Richard, you break the desk! That damn chai. Um, sir. Apart from Miss Alonzo, Commissioner Milford and Madame Jury have also come to see you. What? Madame Jury? What's she doing here? Didn't we fire her? I'm terribly sorry to barge in on you like this. The matter of the fact is that I received a letter from the fan of the opera this morning. According to the letter, you must reinstate me to my job as boxkeeper. Madam Jury, would you come here for a moment? Please turn around and face the other direction. Mr. Richard, what are you... I ought to rot in hell! You ought to drown with your faces buried in the peg state mud. Must you wait and see? Let go, let me go! You want to take a beating? And now you're blatantly threatening the use of physical violence? Viscount, keep your mouth shut. I've never been so infuriated. Please calm yourself, Ms. Alonzo. What brings you here? The letter! I've received a letter as well! What's this thing about falling ill, Miss Alonzo? I'm perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with me at all. Just read this letter. If you sing this evening, an unimaginable misfortune shall fall upon your head. A misfortune far graver than death itself. Well, I'll be with a perfect explicit threat. Normally, I wouldn't bat an eye for such foolish words. But this is clearly a conspiracy. Someone wants to take me down. Richard, look at the handwriting. It looks exactly like the writing in our letter, doesn't it? That means that... This is clearly a challenge to my authority. It's a bl It's obvious Christine Dyer was involved in this. I think I'll clueless at the beginning of just a calculated act. She's dying to take my place, ha! Huh. We've already taken measures about that. You are the biggest star of the Opera House. We won't let anything happen to you. After all I've done to get here, after all those years, you better deal with that little wretch thoroughly. Otherwise, there's no telling that I might do first out of sheer rage. Wait, what did you just say? <laughs> 